Hey all, welcome to the next video in the Lion and the Bat series. Today we are going to be doing the blue armor on Conrad Curves, which you can see on screen. I've gone over the whole process. We're not doing it the same as we did the Lion. This one's going to be much faster and a much simpler technique. And I'm going to explain to you also how you get a nicer result than I've got. The blending, the transitions aren't perfect on, on him because I don't want to spend a ridiculous amount of time on him. But I'll explain how you get a nicer result as we go as well because it's, it's just more of the same ultimately. But if you like the video, if it's helpful, as always, like and subscribe. Feel free to share it. If you want to support the channel, you can support me through Patreon. But as always... My income comes from tuition and commissions, so if you want any tuition at all, either in person or online, you can check out my Patreon or message me directly. Same as if you'd be interested in getting something painted by me, message me through the links on my Facebook and Instagram in the description below. Cheers. So first up, we are going to put the base coat down. Now, the colours that we are using for this is trying to remember now, Vallejo model colour intense blue is the darkest, Vallejo model colour Prussian blue is the middle blue, and Vallejo model colour sky blue is the brightest blue. Now, as you can see on screen, we are back to makeup brushes. This is going to be a fairly fast paint job. I don't want to be spending hours upon hours on this. So, if you've seen the Brass Scorpion series on how I paint the armor panels, this is pretty much the same. So... I'm not thinning this blue down, this is the intense blue. I'm getting on the makeup brush, I'm rubbing it off the brush like you would a dry brush. But the difference is here, you want so the brush has enough paint on it to leave a consistent, a opaque mark, so you don't have to do lots of coverage. But you don't want too much paint on the brush, so when you put the paint on the model. It doesn't leave physical marks. It doesn't it doesn't obscure any of the details. So basically, put the paint on the brush, rub off enough so when you're dabbing it on, it's, it gives you good coverage, but it's not obscuring any of the details. So pretty much don't have big blobs on the brush. And then what we're going to do is, in this case, our light is coming from the top right. So what that means is basically the right-hand side of curves is going to be lighter. Now, nearly all of the armour is going to be blue. There are certain points that I'm going to leave black, like underneath the torso, underneath the arms, that sort of stuff. But nearly everything is going to be this intense blue. Now, it's worth noting that I've used a black base coat on Kurz. The reason why I'm using a black base coat is because that's making this blue darker. You can see on the wet palette cam, that intense blue is actually brighter than what's on the model and in a second I'm going to hair dryer this blue and all of that blue is going to get even darker that's because the black underneath is making that blue darker if you were to put this over a grey or a white the blue would be far more vibrant and we don't want a really bright blue for curves because well his character is self-explanatory so you're going to see this blue change in a second as well quite drastically if you watch it now you'll also see because of the because of the method of painting that we're doing this blue is not consistent what I mean by that is because we're effectively dabbing on the paint it's going to give quite a mottled effect that's absolutely fine if you want a perfectly smooth finish then this method of painting isn't going to be for you or rather this, this the laying down a base coat like this isn't going to be for you there's there's other methods which we'll go over in other video series so anyway enough of my ramblings what we are going to next is the flow model color prussian blue same again we're using that cheap makeup brush these are from poundland or i don't know what you call them a dollar store in america maybe or yeah they're cheap, really, really cheap. So, using that Prussian blue, same thing again, rubbing the paint off. Now, the only thing is, <clears throat> rubbing the paint off of the brush, but the only thing is, this time we're being a bit more sparing. So, I'm only catching the half of the leg in this case. So, I'm leaving that dark blue in most places. So, 
the more of this Prussian blue that you're going to have, the brighter the armor tone of its in, in itself is going to be. The more of the dark blue you leave in the shadow, the darker the blue is going to look. So in this case, I'm just kind of, I'm trying to paint half of everything blue with the Prussian blue, sorry. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to just pick out the right hand side or the top edges. So you can see with that shin and the knee pad, it's the top right. I'm not doing the whole of the knee pad. It's only half of it. Then you can see the front of this shin. I'm doing the half again towards the edge and I'm using the edge. So if you look at the angle that I'm using, that my brush is hitting that model, it's the actual edge of the shin and the armor plates are stopping that brush from going over to the other side. So it gives you that nice hard line. So we're not being too careful here. It's the same as I always say, if we sketch in what we want first, then we can refine it all later. And then this gives you a good idea of whether you're gonna like the result very early before you really start trying to soften transitions and spending loads of time on them. So it's worth knowing you should be enjoying this. This is this stage is we're not being careful, so you should be having fun with it. If you put too much Prussian blue down and you don't like it, it's really simple to just go back to that intense blue and go over it like we have like like we are doing now with the Prussian blue. Just go back with the intense blue and correct it. This isn't this isn't something that you need to be really precious about and would probably say you don't need to be so careful with your painting as long as you haven't got a huge amount of paint on your brush like we said at the beginning to the point that it obscures your details you'd be surprised how carefree you can be with it so next up we're going to change brush so this is a size 2 Windsor and Newton it's quite an old brush because I'm, I'm I'm still not being very careful but this time we're going to thin the paint down. You can see on there, we're jumping to the Prussian blue. This is thinned down to probably two parts water to one part paint. Now, all we're going to do here is we're going to start being a bit more careful and we're picking out the where we want our armor to be brighter. So for example, I'm still going for this right hand side light and the light hitting the top towards the top of the model and on the right hand side towards the edges. Now, when I'm using my brush you can see I'm starting towards the shadows and I'm pulling towards my brightest point so if you watch here my brush is going towards where I'm removing my brush so I want my brightest point on the edge of the shin or in this case at the bottom corner of that armor on the chest so my brush is being pulled towards that point and the reason for that is is Generally speaking, when you pull your brush and you remove your brush from the model, the end of your brush stroke is where the most paint sits. The most paint will be left on the model. So it's better to leave, to remove your brush at your brightest point when you're doing a highlight or if you're doing a shadow at your darkest point so just think about where your brush comes away from the model because the end of your brush stroke is where you're going to leave the most paint and you're going to have the hardest mark so you can see all I'm doing is where I've with the makeup brush where I've placed my highlights now I'm just refining it and making it brighter because the paint is even when it's unthinned the acrylic paints we're using are transparent. Even these are Vallejo model color and they're really opaque paints. They still have a level of transparency to them. And we're using that transparency and we're building up those layers of paint. So even just using the Prussian blue again over the Prussian blue that we use with a makeup brush, we're still getting a stronger color or a brighter color. So it's worth doing two or three coats just to build up a highlight sometimes and you can see the difference here when I'm when I'm using it when I'm using a different brush and a different brush stroke so and you can see most of the time I'm using the side of my brush if I can or if I can't because I can't get the angle I'm using the tip of my brush and you can just see how I'm 
creating those shapes. And I think it's really important here. I say to so many people that I do tuition with, you need to be brave. You need to really not worry about going too bright or too dark. When you're painting, especially 28 millimeter miniatures, your contrast between light and dark needs to be quite extreme or should be quite extreme because because the scale is so small you need to emphasize and over exaggerate everything now there are far there are loads more different types of contrast other than light and dark but that's the biggest one that we play with especially when it comes to gaming miniatures because that's the one that has the most striking effect but you really need to just not be afraid to be brave with it because otherwise you get a very flat finish and there are plenty of amazing painters out there and I follow quite a few and their painting is really good, it's really neat and they have some lovely finished models but the reality is that their painting is very flat because they struggle to get that level of contrast and what I tend to find when I'm doing tuition, people, or tuition with people is generally it's a bravery thing or they don't realize that when you paint on everything else around it, it tones down that contrast that you've created. So it's always better to go too far with your contrast because it's easy to tone it down. Make sure that you pick out all, your, all the little details here as well. This is where we're gonna start picking out things like fingers and the little shapes. And remember, you don't want two bigger highlights you don't want two bigger marks because then it's all just gonna you the whole model is just gonna look really light blue and you can see that i just broke the claw <laughs> where um i was being a bit lazy right so now that i've broken the claw uh, and glued it back on you're gonna see that i'm constantly having problems with it for the rest of the model now um but regardless we're gonna go a little bit brighter now so we're going to that sky blue and we're mixing in the prussian blue the thing is if you go straight to the sky blue that's a huge huge jump in tone it's a huge hugely bright color and if you put go straight to the sky blue it's going to leave a massively different mark massively brighter mark and it's just too much so you want to go for something in between so just mix them probably 50 50 but see how you feel about it and then we're going to do exactly the same thing the difference here is we're going smaller so in these points that we're putting down in these highlight areas you can see on that knee pad we're going for a much smaller area than we did previously because once again if you go too large with this with your highlight placement the brighter colors all that ends up happening is you end up making this armor the too much of the armor is that bright and then you just end up with a armor that will look like it's effectively baby blue so you need to keep that darkness and make your, as you go brighter and brighter, your highlights get smaller. And generally speaking, the smaller your highlights, the shinier it will look as well. So that's something to bear in mind, but less is more in this case. You can see that all I'm doing is really picking out the points that I want to be bright. So that knee pad, the top of the curve, any really, really sharp angles. You can see on the legs now as well, starting to be far more picky and precise about where they're going because I don't want it too bright and it's the same as that chest that that line on the right hand side of the chest we're just making those corners pop a little bit now and we're going to do that over the whole model
Right, so next step is the pure sky blue. Now this is more of the same, so I'm going to speed it up again, but I don't want you to miss the footage so you see where I'm placing my highlights in this case, but you don't have to follow what I'm doing, but yeah. So this is the pure sky blue. Again, the paint's thinned down to probably two or three parts water to one part paint. That gives me a nice thin mark, so I'm not leaving a really strong mark of sky blue. Now, this is really, really small. You can see on that knee pad, it's really tiny. You want this to be small marks that will just make it pop. Right, so that's the armor transitions done. Now, there's a few things missing here and I'm gonna go over them throughout this section. So firstly, we need to be fixing the some of the more dodgy transitions that, that I've done. Now, you might not have any of these. You might have been far more careful than me and if you have, terrific, because you should be, but I, I as you know, I can be pretty lazy sometimes when I get bored. So, what we're going to do, I'm going back to those transitions that don't particularly look great. And also what I'm going to do here is where we have been using the makeup brush or we haven't been overly careful about obscuring, painting into the recesses, we're going to go into, our, into the recesses of certain parts of the armor and create the shapes and, um, sorry, redefine those shadows. And we're also, most importantly, is we're going to add some edge highlights because remember what I said, I always say about readability, you need to be able to read the shapes. We're looking at really small things and you need to try and help people see what they're looking at very quickly. It's also worth noting at this point that the model's changed. I've painted everything around it black. The reason why I painted everything black is because where we've been painting and... We've been going over everything with the makeup brush and we haven't worried too much about going over like the armor trim, for example, and the little details. Just painting everything black around it or all of a sudden it, it shapes and frames everything that you have been painting with the blue. So it gets you a good idea of what your blue actually looks like as opposed to it just being everywhere. Right, so anyway, so what we're doing at the moment is where edge highlighting now edge highlighting is so important because you need to make sure that the model is as readable as possible now your edge highlights don't have to be really extreme like tron style um and i think games workshop are a good example of how edge highlights can be very extreme and give a nice result i have nothing against uh gw's style of painting i actually really like it but their edge highlights for me are probably a bit too vibrant so in this case i'm using the prussian blue that's my mid-tone first of all and i'm edge highlighting basically all the darker areas so that's giving that some shape and then afterwards i'm going to go over with the sky blue and in the brighter areas i'm going to do the sky blue so i'm going to have two levels of edge highlight one of which being brighter than the other so remember with your edge highlights there's two ways you edge highlight you either have to paint a line or you can catch the edge of the model like i'm doing on screen like the edge of the brush sorry like i'm doing on screen now so what you need to do first thing is is you don't want a huge amount of paint on your brush if you've got a lot of paint on your brush you're going to get a very thick blobby inconsistent line so you get your paint on your brush and then you need to rub some off so you i use my thumb as you can see on screen and you can use kitchen roll or something like that but 
you run your brush along your thumb or your kitchen roll and you twist it as you go and you're looking to pull the excess paint off of that brush and create a nice tip on the brush as you go as well and then rub your brush along your thumb or kitchen roll whatever you're using to test the mark that is going to happen so you're testing your brush stroke off the model first because then if it doesn't work if you don't like it you have made a mistake on your off the model as opposed to on the model and then once you're happy with the way your brush is if you're catching the edge with the side of your brush it's nice and easy just run your brush along the edge try not to try to keep the same amount of pressure on the brush and the model and then that will give you a more consistent line if you're finding your blot or you're putting too much paint on if you're finding you're getting like blobs on the edge of paint you're not getting a nice strong line consistent line sorry that means you've got too much paint on your brush and if your paint is if you're not leaving a strong enough mark or it's running into the recesses your paint is too thin the next problem the next option is is sometimes you will not be able to get the angle on the model to run your the side of your brush along the edge and what that means is you might have to physically paint a line on the edge of that model now this is something that I really highly recommend that you practice if you want to be a bit better miniature painter and if you want to improve you really need to be able to paint lines because it comes into play so often so when it comes to painting lines a lot of people say that they have shaky hands yeah that makes sense try and exhale as you pull your brush towards you remember the brush stroke that you pull towards your body has the most control and I'm going to break the model again here um, and also if you exhale as you pull then it will steady your hand and your breathing right so the last part of the video I'm going to let it run through sped up because it's pretty much the same this whole process is very similar all the way going through make up brushes to get our colors and our levels down our positions of our highlights and shadows down pushing those highlights with our brush stroke with a larger brush and then jump into a smaller brush and edge highlighting and picking out our shadows so you can see at the moment the shapes on the model so the shadows on the chest plate and on the knee pads and on the feet I'm just painting in them with the intense blue and these are just reinforcing those shapes and bringing them back so as soon as you look at the model you can clearly see there's some kind of ridge there it's all about readability and then after that after this bit I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna edge highlight with that sky blue and just pick out the last little details as I said I'll show you on screen because I like to show you them and you'll see it sped up There we go, blue armor on Conrad Kurz. <clears throat> now, this is one way of doing it. It's a way that I quite like. Looks fairly uh, bright, but still has lots of contrast. 
it's really quite striking and it should look good alongside the lion now if you want to make this far smoother the reality is is the stages that you've used on this video you just need to use thinner paint and build up those layers slower that's literally the only difference when it comes to competition pieces and golden demon if you want a beautiful smooth perfect transition it's about ultra thin paint building up those layers slowly you can do the same thing with texture like we did with the lion and you can still get that great result but it's a different result anyway as always i hope the video was helpful give me some feedback let me know what you thought is this the sort of thing you want to see do you want to see something different let me know